So if you're familiar at all with major scales, you'll know that the C major scale is a collection of all the natural notes. We have C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and we don't have any sharps or flats or accidentals. If you're unfamiliar about how to construct scales or any of the theory behind the scales, check out this video on how to find chords in the scale where I go over all of the music theory basics. But today now we're not going to be looking at that. We're going to be looking at more of how this applies to the guitar and how we can use the scales to learn the guitar fretboard a little better. And if you take a look in the description, you'll find a supplementary PDF of everything I talk about in this video. Now, as I was telling one of my students the other day, each of the strings on the guitar is like its own piano because we have all of the notes strung along each of the string. It's like a sort of limited piano where we have about like 24-ish notes or less, depending on the guitar you have. That's about two octaves a little less per string. So it can be very daunting to learn the fretboard and even a lot more advanced guitarists don't really know the fretboard because it's like a big thing to tackle. So now without further ado, I'm going to show you how I use these scales to map out the fretboard. So the first thing that I would do is map out all the natural notes on the string. Now essentially this gives us the C major scale and some might consider these the modes of the major scale, although not quite the modes. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to go through all the strings and we're going to map out the natural notes. If you're unfamiliar with the musical alphabet, we have A through G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. There are sharps and flats between all of the notes, except for between E and F and B and C. Those two are the exceptions to the rule and those are the two spots on the piano where there isn't a black key in between the white keys. On the piano, the natural notes are the white keys and the sharps and flats are the black keys. We don't have it so laid out on the guitar because we just have fret after fret. Now the way the guitar works is essentially we have each of these strings, we have this E string. Now the musical alphabet just basically goes up on the string. So if we start from E, we have F, then F sharp or G flat, G, G sharp or A flat, A, a sharp or B flat and B. Then we have C because there's no sharp or flat between B and C and then so on. But for me going through it all chromatically, it doesn't really make that much sense because we're just kind of overloading ourselves with from information. It's like seeing a chart on the internet with all the notes on the fretboard. You don't really know what exactly is happening. So what we want to do is we want to find the natural notes. And if we wanted to find a sharp or flat note, we can just alter one or two of the tones. So anyway, you start off with the E and then you have F here on the first fret. You're going to skip over the second fret, which is F sharp or G flat. We have G. And then we have A on the 5th fret, B on the 7th fret, C on the 8th fret, D on the 10th fret, and E on the 12th fret. Now you want to go through these and you want to try to have a consistent fingering. One thing that I see a lot with students is them going like this. Now while that does work and we do get the note names, you're sort of memorizing the fret and you're not really getting it into your muscle memory. We want to get this information in our fingers so we have another thing to recall it from. In general, whenever I learn things, I like to learn things from a bunch of different angles so I have different perspectives and I have different ways of remembering rather than relying on one solid way. So essentially, you'd play it up and down the neck and you say the notes out loud as you're playing them. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. And then you would sort of test yourself, ask yourself, where's C? Eighth fret of the E string. Where's G? Sixth fret. Where's D? Tenth fret. And so on. As you start to memorize that, you'll get more familiar with it. I only go up to the 12th fret because that's where the octave is, and above the 12th fret is where the notes start repeating, so we don't necessarily need to memorize above it because it mirrors the earlier half. Then you would go on to the next one. You have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and A. Now I generally recommend starting with just the E and the A string at first because a lot of the chord voicings or a lot of the scale patterns will start on those. Then after that, I would suggest you use the cage system. Now if you're unfamiliar with the cage system, essentially it's starting a scale on the note C, A, G, E, D, caged. So now I'm going to show you the five caged patterns of the C major scale and where they exist on the fretboard. So first we have this shape. So that's the C shape of the C major scale. So then the next shape is A. So then we're going to go down to the fifth fret of the E string. And then we're going to play the exact notes of the C major scale starting on A. And then it gives us this scale pattern. This is also known as the relative minor because if we play C starting on A, we get the relative minor, which is A natural minor scale. Then the next in our cage thing is G. So we're going to start on G. And then the next shape starts on E, so we're going to go up here. And then finally, the last one is D, which goes over here. So then if you learn all of those, then you'll also have another way of referencing the major scale. You have C, D, E, 
F G A B C D E F G A B C D A B C D E F G A B C D E F G A B C G A B C D E F G A B C D E F G A E F G A B C D E F G A B C D E F G and then finally D E F G A B C D E F G A B C D E F. So once you learn that, then you have another perspective on scale using the perspective we have already. Since we already know the notes in the e, low E string because we did our exercise E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. Now we're simply plugging in these scale patterns slash shapes. Another cool thing about the cage thing is that we can actually connect all the shapes together. If you look at the second half of the shape starting on C and the first half of the shape starting on D, you'll notice that they're the exact same notes. There's some overlap. So one thing we can do is pivot from one shape to another. So this is something I like to do with some of my students. So essentially, whenever I hit this C, which is the octave, Whenever I hit the last note on the D string for the first shape, I'm going to pivot over to the second shape. So it'll go a little bit like this. So we're approaching the pivot note. We go here and then I'm going to slide over my pinky and continue the pattern of the second shape. Now this gets us all the way up to F where before we only got up to D. So then once you've learned that, one thing you can do is also incorporate the three note per string scale. So the three note per string scale is exactly how it sounds. You're gonna play a scale, but you're only gonna play three notes per string. This one requires a little more hands-on to sort of figure out the shapes. I'm not exactly gonna post it because for me, I had to kind of like find them out by myself. And that actually kind of taught me the fretboard because from looking, I kind of sort of memorized where everything was. So we start on the E string. We're gonna start on C and we're gonna play C, D and E. Now we already use our three notes. So we gotta go to F. F normally is over here because it's a half step away. But now we have to find F on the A string. So if we look on the A string, F is gonna be on the eighth fret. So we're gonna play F, G, A, and we're gonna find B on the next string because we use their three notes. So B, C, D, and then we have to find E on the G string, E, F, G, and then A, B, C, and then D, E, F. So then that gives us this all together. What's cool about the three notes for string though is that you can do that for every note of the C major scale. And then along those lines, then we want to play our three octave major scales. This is something I talk about in my video, Creative Ways on Practicing the Major Scale. So when you're done here, if you want more ways of practicing, check out that video. But anyway, so this is going to be similar to the three notes for string scale. I'm going to switch over to G major, which has the same exact notes, but instead of an F, it has an F sharp now. So essentially what we want to do is get from G on the third fret of the E string all the way up to G. 15th fret of the high E string. So there's many ways to do this and there's not exactly one way to do it, but I would recommend kind of plotting out some kind of thing or like be consistent in the way you're playing it just so you can get a, get a better grasp of it. Again, we want to get into our muscle memory. So we're going to start off right here. So we're going to play the first few notes. So we have G and then we have A and then we have B and then we have C, which is a half step away. So we can play it here or here. Now, since we want to get all the way up here, I think it's a good idea to pivot over here and use four notes on this string. Then for the next one, we want to play a D and we don't want to play on the same string because then we're not going to have that much range to get all the way up here. So the next note would be D. So D on the A string is A, B, C, D on the fifth fret and then D to E, which is a whole step. And then we have to go from E to F sharp, which is another whole step. And then we have G over here. Then after G, we want to go to A and I don't want to go over because we're losing from frets. We're almost there in terms of frets. So I'm going to go back again. So we have A, B, C, D, and then we have the option of going up here or shifting strings. I'm going to shift strings just because I sort of want to. So we have E, F sharp, G, and then A. So then we could go to B over here or we can jump here to the next string. So B, C, D, and then E, F, G. Now, if you notice some of these things I played look really familiar. I used the little parts of the cage system, the three notes per scale system, and the natural notes on the guitar. So if you have all of those down, this will be a relatively easy thing. All of these are sort of stepwise things that the more you get, the easier it gets, and the more you learn the fretboard. So now I'm gonna play the whole thing for you going up. So that's a three octave major scale. There's another exercise I like to do, which involves doing the same exact thing, but as soon as I get up here, I go down in C major. 
Now, as I said before, the only difference between C major and G major is that G major has an F sharp, C major has an F natural. So when we're doing that, we're only changing one distinct note, but since we're playing three octaves, there's a few of them that we have to kind of avoid and accommodate. I usually do this in the circle of fifth, so I start with G and then I go to C and then F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, B, E, a and then D and then back to G. If you want an example of this, I made this YouTube short a while ago where I played exactly this and kind of just demonstrate the exercise and I tell you exactly what keys I'm playing and when I'm pivoting and stuff like that. So check that out if you want an example of that. And then finally, the last piece of advice I have is sight reading, but not just sight reading, sight reading in positions. Now sight reading is a really great skill to have, but it also forces you to memorize the notes on the fretboard. One of the hardest parts of sight reading on guitar is the fact that we have so many repeated notes. We have like C, 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 C. Those are all the exact same notes in the exact same range. So which one do we play? Well, one thing we could do is we can position off the neck so that way we only have the distinct notes. For example, if we stick to open to fourth fret on all the strings, we don't have any repetitions. We have E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and then we have A. We have another A here, but since we're gonna stick between the fourth fret, we don't have the option of playing this A. Then we have A, B flat or A sharp, B, C, C sharp or D flat, and then we have D next. We could hit this one, but again, we can't. The only note that's repeated is on the fourth fret because of the way we tune the guitar. We have a major third between the G and the B string. Other than that, all the notes are distinct and they're going to be all in one nice and neat position. So my last suggestion would be to pick up some kind of book and work on sight reading and try to change the positions. Maybe one day you'll do open to fourth fret, but then another time you'll do fifth fret to ninth fret, or maybe like 10th fret to 12th fret or whatever kind of range you want. Just pick a range to limit yourself so that way you avoid repetition. And then you have to really internalize the guitar fretboard in order to read the music. One book I would recommend is the Box Sonatas and Partitas. It's a great book because most of the things are straight 16th notes, so you don't necessarily have to worry about the rhythms. You're just focusing on the notes and it'll help you learn the notes in the fretboard. Or you can sight read based on the scale positions you know, whether it's the cage or the three notes per string. A lot of music has a key signature, which tells you exactly what notes are in the piece. And since it's in a key signature and scales give you all the notes in the key, you'll have all the right notes with the exception of accidentals, which are just a slight accommodation. Another book I'd recommend it would be The Real Book. You could flip open any page and try to sight read that. So that's about all the tips I have for you today. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it helped. If you've made this far, thank you so much for sticking around and I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.